Okay, hello YouTube. Um, today we're going to be covering uh, the video number three in my four-part series on the French. We're going to be covering um, one sideline that I didn't cover in the first two videos, and then we're going to be covering the mainline Alakine Charter attack for the rest of the video. So we'll go ahead and just get started. Uh, the one sideline happens after e4, d6, d4, d5, knight c3, and I wanted to point out this one sideline with the move knight c6. Now the idea is actually kind of similar to the variation I showed where the knight came to f6, bishop g5, bishop e7, and then the knight popped into e4. They're trying to do the same thing, but they're trying to pull it off with with a little bit more um, oomph because this knight is actually attacking the d4 square. So the variation I recommend is just something really simple to get an advantage. I recommend just knight f3, knight f6, and then here I do not recommend the move... Um, bishop g5, because in the case of bishop g5, after this bishop comes to e7, e5, and then say knight e4, bishop e7, queen e7, um, it's a little bit harder to just get an easy advantage with the move bishop to d3, because unlike in the previous line, um, the move queen to b4 actually uh, works a little bit better in this position than it does in the other variation. Um, it's just not as easy to deal with this. So I don't recommend it because um, because queen before is at least somewhat playable here, partially because this knight is on c6. So rewinding, if we go back, instead of bishop g5, what I recommend is just simply the move e5, just kicking this knight right away, and then knight e4, and now I just recommend bishop d3 just on the spot. Now normally they'll play bishop b4, and then I just go ahead and I'll give up the bishop pair. I'll play bishop d2, knight takes d2, queen takes d2. Now I know that I just gave up the bishop pair, and that seems like kind of a bad thing if you're playing the white pieces. How are we giving up the bishop pair so soon? But black is still stuck with this bad bishop on c8, and he doesn't really have a good way to fix that problem. So white just has this this very easy, very slight edge, and he's got an advantage on the light squares, and he's just going to have an advantage on the light squares and a little bit more space for the rest of the game. And um, plenty of strong grandmasters are willing to play the position this way, and it's it, in my mind it's a very easy line to play, and there's no way that I can get into any trouble with it. So I, I do like it for that reason. So like um, the main line is kind of just f6, and then I'll go ahead and I'll put the question right to the bishop, and... I certainly think it's possible for black to go ahead and just keep the bishop pair and just retreat the bishop to e7. I hardly ever see that move, though. Normally they just give the bishop pair right back. Um, they play bishop c3, queen c3, f e5, d captures e5. And as you can see, white still has a little bit more space. And black tends to have kind of permanent problems um, on the light squares. Um, to give you an example, uh, this is being taken from an Arashenko game. Uh, that was played in the Ukraine in 2016, and I'll just kind of briefly show you how that game continued, just so you get an idea. You know, white centralized his pieces, and then he just kind of immediately starts aiming at these light squares, and you can already see um, there, there's just potentially major problems here. Um, and Arashenko just went on to win this game. Um, you know, it was it was a it was a long game, but he, he actually he he won it, and he was never in any serious danger. So let's go ahead and go back to the main line. So knight f6, and then we're going to have our main line is going to be the move bishop to g5. So the move bishop g5, and then uh, bishop e7, and now I'm going to recommend the move e5. So you can play this uh, another way. This is the main line... Um, we're looking at the mainline Alakine charter attack. There's, of course, a, an alternative. You could have played e5 instead of bishop g5. That's called the Steinitz variation. And the only difference there is your, your bad bishop ends up behind the pawn chain, which both has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is, is that you're holding the d4 square, which is a critical square. But the disadvantage is you keep your bad bishop. Um, and my preference is just, if I can get rid of it, I'd like to get rid of it. As you can see in every line just about that I've shown you, I've, I've put some effort into trying to get rid of this, this dark squared bishop. So um, knight fd7 is the main line, and then the Alakine charter attack starts with the move h4. Now, of course, the super main line is just bishop captures e7. Um, but I like the Alakine charter attack. It puts a, a big question to black as to kind of what to do. 
Now, of course, if black wants to, black can accept the pawn with bishop takes g5, and that's definitely an option. What's weird is it's the option I think I see the least, so I'm going to cover it um, uh, last. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you. You have to know it if you sacrifice the pawn, and the lines that come from it are really neat and really cool, and I've never had any trouble playing the positions with white after the pawn gets sacrificed. Um, but it's certainly not the line I see the most. I would say that people decline it the most. And um, part of that is because there's probably, you know, three ways that people decline it. So they feel like they have more options or more control. But the moves that I see the most are h6, c5, and a6. So we'll just go one at a time. We'll take a look at h6. Now, I recommend a pretty universal approach to all three of these moves. I recommend bishop takes e7, queen takes e7. And then you have two options just kind of depending on how aggressive you are as a player. Um, the main line option is to play the move queen to g4, castles, and then hold your center with f4, c5, and then knight f3. And that's just you hold your center structure together, but you get your queen outside of the pawn chain with the move queen g4. Uh, I am not uh, usually brave enough to do this. I, I like to keep the queen back on d2 and hold my center together that way, and then I like to attack the king side with pawns. And that's the other option, is you just play f4, and this is actually very similar to the Steinitz variation without the bad bishop. And then an example would be after a6, knight f3, c5, and you can see how this is kind of universal. You can do this against a6 and, and h6. Queen d2, knight c6, and then there's kind of two options here that are both playable, and I'll show them both briefly. One is you can just castle queenside b5, and then there was this game that went like this, where white centralized his pieces and then just started attacking the black king. Meanwhile, white got attacked pretty viciously on the queen side, but the queen side attack didn't really amount to much, and white was just able to land that final blow um, on the king side and win the game. And this was a really cool game. This was uh, Prudadozi uh, versus Baikov in Kalmana, Russia in 2016. And I liked that game. I thought that was really neat. I've actually castled queenside a fair number of times, um, you know, because I thought this is a this is a pretty cool attack. You get all the rooks over there. You just play g4, g5. You play for mate. This is my style. The other way you can do it is you don't have to castle into the attack. You can play g4, and you can play on the king side as well, and you just keep your king kind of in the middle. Um, and this falls into uh, this this particular game we're following fell into just basically like a standard kind of French defense game where where white is perfectly okay with with exchanging queens because again black just ends up with worse pieces than white and then white's just going to have this long term kind of permanent advantage and of course this game ended up going um, you know into an end game and white just had an advantage in pieces his pieces are just better notice again we have that situation where all these pawns are on light squares and we're still stuck with this light squared bishop so if you just want to see how this game finishes uh white won some material and then he sacrificed an exchange but he managed to get these ridiculously dangerous pawns and then he was able to make those pawns uh prove themselves shortly after um eventually he just pushed his pawn to g6 and black resigned this pawn duo is going to make a queen so that was uh, Sarek versus Persk um, in Germany in 2018. So uh, going back, just going to play the big rewind button here. Um, so that kind of covers h6. And interestingly enough, I kind of do the same thing um, just because my repertoire isn't all that versatile in terms of the things that I do. I do the same thing against a6, although against a6, I would say it's got a little less to be recommended. I would say that that probably just queen g4 here is just going to be best. But I, I've done the same thing against a6 with, with similar results. I don't think that um, the move bishop takes e7 is unplayable. I think you can play bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, and you can just do this the exact same way. You can just play bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, f4. Um, again, we kind of run into, uh, it, is the move queen before possible? That's like the only thing I care about. Can they can they refute my setup? And again, a3 seems to get the job done. Um, you know, queen to b2, knight a4 still traps the queen, so that seems to work. So uh, when the queen uh, inevitably retreats, like a3, queen b6, you play b4, a5, rook b1, uh, knight c6. This looks fine. It looks like everything's held together. And actually after knight b5... This is actually kind of a, a hard position for for black to play. So as long as queen b4 doesn't work, um, that's going to mean that 
Black's just going to have to play like more sedate options like the move c5. And then knight f3, knight c6, queen d2, b5, h5, and then see h6 needs to come eventually anyway. So that's why I don't have any kind of objection to playing the position this way, because it feels like close enough to the same position um, in the h6 lines that there's just not much of a difference. So I'll go ahead and I'll play these lines and I'll play them the same way. So this is an option. But like I said, the tippy top, the best line is probably to get your queen out of the pawn chain with queen g4. This this puts the most pressure on black. Okay, so those are um, the declined variations. Now, uh, before I continue, I have to show you the most common declined variation, which is, of course, the move c5. Now, this is kind of neat. There's, there's a nifty little trap here. Um, you again play bishop takes e7. But what's cool about this is they really have to take back with the king, which I know sounds weird. But if they play queen takes e7, the move knight b5 is, is really hard to meet. Um, there is one kind of weird sacrificial line they can try. They can go ahead and castle, and they can give you the rook on c7. Notice that they were just having a real hard time just defending this rook. Um, after knight b5, there's just not a clear uh, good move. There's, there's so many moves that are just going to get you into loads of trouble. I mean, just defending with knight a6, you're running into knight d6 check. And you're just getting t into tons and tons of trouble here. So th there's one line that's that's kind of worth exploring. Um, it goes castles, and then knight c7, and then they sacrifice with knight takes e5, knight e8. Notice your knight was attacked, so you didn't have time to take his knight. And then c takes d4, and you, you've got a big pawn center for black, and they're planning on gaining some tempo. Queen takes d4, knight c6, queen d2, and then queen d6. And you've got this big center, and the knight on a8 is kind of getting trapped. But I think white, for the most part, is coming out on top here. Um, following this game from uh, Khalifman versus Levin and Riga in, uh, in 1988, went bishop d7, and then this was the continuation. Of course, they do harvest that knight, but you see that you know white is just still up in exchange, and he's got a little bit more space on the, on the king side. And at least in this game, he was able to uh, make his advantages much more more important than his disadvantages, and he was able to do that pretty quickly. Um, after rook df1, uh, Khalifman won this game. So going back, um, c5, bishop takes e7, king takes e7 is kind of forced, and then I guess their king is in the middle. And again, my recommendation is just play chess, you know, just play f4, hold the center, and just continue uh, with, with just holding the center. Now the one line you do have to know a little bit about is they play, play queen b6, putting pressure on d4, putting pressure on b2. You actually have to play the move knight a4. The normal here is queen c6, and then knight c5, knight c5, d c5, queen c5, and then again, just develop normally. Just queen d2, knight c6, h5, forcing h6, and then you just castle queen side, and you just continue to play chess. Rook a c8, king b1, and I'm actually following a pretty long game. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but... In a very long game, eventually Velomirovic won against um, Meljanic in uh, 1992. So that was a, it was a, just, white seems to be doing perfectly acceptable in these positions. So, okay, so those are all the lines that you'll probably see the most, but of course those are all the boring lines. Uh, none of those are any fun. It's way more fun when they take the, the pawn. Uh, so <laughs> bishop takes g5, h takes g5, queen takes g5. And now uh, knight h3, queen e7, queen g4 starts kind of the alakine charter attack. White gets a huge attack uh, um, on, along the open h file. What I like about this line is it's kind of like I'm saying, you know what, this h pawn is just a pawn I'd rather not have. I'm willing to play all the main lines, but but could I just please have an open h file? Um, you know, I, I want the open file more than I want the pawn. And I think that's true. I think you want the open file more than you want the pawn. And so g6 is the move that gets played the most. And the move that I'm actually going to recommend here um, is not the main line. Uh, I think the main line, I think, is still knight g5. And I think people have been getting pretty good results with the move uh, knight g5. I think this has been doing pretty good. Um, I think I have a very recent game here with knight g5, and then uh, this continued. And you can just see how smooth it is. They just play knight g5. It forces h5 right away. The queen shuffles to f4, and then they just castle, and then they just play g4. And 
in this game, White got the pawn back right away and, and hit F7. So clearly he's got an advantage pretty quickly. So I would use this line as kind of a fallback line if something goes wrong with, with the line I'm actually going to recommend. Because the line I'm going to recommend, it's both trappier and, and potentially a little bit more dangerous for White. I'm not sure exactly what could be wrong with it, but I know that there's there's potentially... I'm not sure, but they used to play this move actually a lot more, the move bishop d3. But when they played it, they played, a lot of people that played this played this with the idea of bringing the knight to f4, which is, is clearly incorrect. But my idea is I want to bring the knight actually to, um, to g5. So an example here would be, let's say, a6, which is pretty common to try to keep the knight out of b5. Now I'm intending knight g5, and after h5, I'm just going to shuffle my queen back to g3. And this creates a nasty threat of knight takes f7. And this threat is actually difficult to meet, especially because it's difficult to see that this is a threat. Um, a great example of like how you could win the game really quickly is c5. You know, they're trying to collapse your center with c takes d4 and knight takes e5, but boom. You're hitting them with knight f7 first, and this is kind of a winning combination, and it's really cool. So if um, king takes f7, we would have queen takes g6 check. So you've got king takes f7, queen takes g6 check, king f8, and then this is the critical point. You just bring your rook into the game. And just I love rook lifts in openings where the rook lift is actually like a winning maneuver. So like rook f3 coming to h3, and that's just going to be the end of it. An example would be like this. If you want to follow this all the way to the end, we would just have a losing position after all this gets played. So the other possibility is, of course, queen takes f7, but then just bishop takes g6, winning the queen. So knight f7 is a huge threat, and they have to meet it very carefully. So what I recommend is instead a move like knight c6, and then things, and this is, things get kind of dicey here. So castle's queen side is my recommendation. And now you wait for knight takes d4, and then you go ahead and play knight takes f7, king takes f7, bishop g6. Notice that you're playing this check with the bishop because there was a risk of the knight covering the f5 square and covering the f3 square and preventing your continued attack. So king g8, rook d4, queen g7, trying to hold it all together. And then you can play this this next sacrifice. I love openings with multiple sacrifices. <laughs> Knight takes d5, e takes d5, rook takes d5. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like black can hold it together. Uh, rook h6, and then this really cool move. I, I want to get an opportunity to play this in a game. So I hope one of you watches this video and you get an opportunity to play this move in a game because this this is the this would be like the feel good move of your life. You just leave the bishop hanging. It looked like they felt like they were winning this bishop. You leave it hanging and you play queen b3 and you're just completely destroying the king. And they don't have a good move here. Uh their best move is actually king f8 and then you could polish them off with queen b4 c5 and i just love how this whole time it just feels like they're getting out but they never quite get out queen f4 king h8 and then just you snag a pawn king h8 and then e6 and you're winning with e6 and rook d8 and notice how they haven't developed the bishop on c8 and rook a8 this would this is a cla this is like classic morphe almost um this would be this would be great if if you could ever manage to pull this off and make it happen so i've got a little bit more here i've actually worked this out um to the end And if I could actually pull this whole thing off in a game, I would feel pretty spectacular about it. <laughs> so, but that's just a little bit of a little bit of preparation, a little bit of what can happen in these knight c6 lines um, with with castle's queen side. Now, of course, um, I think maybe a6. If I go back to a6, I think maybe a6 is kind of a mistake after bishop d3. I think they almost have to play knight c6. And again, I recommend castle's queen side, and then I think the usual is knight b6, and then again, knight to g5, h5, and now I think you have to play queen f4, because I think you have to stay on your d4 pawn, because they do have the knight on c6 hitting it, and then I think they can actually still take it. So knight takes d4, and then again, I'm recommending knight takes f7, 
queen takes f7 but in this case queen to d4 bishop d7 queen h4 to prevent castling knight to c8 and then i recommend rook h3 and i think white has an advantage here um you're just you're 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 cutting the king off from castling they don't have moves like queen e7 for instance um to try to break their castling rights because you have bishop g6 and you're just threatening you know moves again like these really moves that almost play themselves like moves like rook f3 and um bishop takes g6 and etc and i just really like white's position here so that's my recommendation. My recommendation is um, go ahead and play bishop d3 and with the idea of knight g5 and try to make these ideas with, with knight takes f7 work um, because usually you can. Um, and I haven't found a situation where I really can't find a way to eventually make that idea work. And of course, if they, if they manage to shut me down just completely, um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and continue with, you know, moves like g4 and taking on h5 and i can always shuffle that bishop back from d3 to e2 and i can just take on h5 or try to harvest that pawn on h5 and we end up with a position very similar to the main line where the knight goes to g5 and the queen goes to f4 immediately um and this is basically how you play the alakine charter attack this is how you play the main lines um in in knight of six okay so i hope this video was helpful and i hope that you learned something new about chess in the next video, I will be going over the mainline win or variations. That'll be the final video of this series. Um, thank you very much for watching.